Does that answer? Yes. Yeah, okay, we'll we've got it. it. Okay, a couple last questions. We'll take one from above and then we'll come back. A couple last questions, one up there. Yes. Thank you so much for speaking with us tonight. Dr. Goodall, there are two populations of chimpanzees whose lives I think are particularly heartbreaking. Um, our captive chimpanzees in the United States, research animals particularly, and the orphans that are in sanctuaries from the bushmeat trade in Africa, being raised as best they can, but without social structures and without chimpanzee adults to guide them into their maturing. I wonder what you hope for for those populations of animals, those individuals in those situations. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Goodall. Well, firstly, the lab situation in the US, there are fewer and fewer chimpanzees being used in medical research because they're very expensive and because there's such a lot of um, uh, criticism from the animal rights groups. And those chimpanzees are being moved into sanctuaries. So there are quite a few sanctuaries in the US for ex-lab chimps. And some of them have been so traumatized with their long years in the labs, they never learned to behave normally. There is a certain, uh, call it this, a certain um, core chimpanzee behavior, sort of instinctive behavior, which means that even quite disturbed individuals, if they have an opportunity to be together, can function as a kind of group in, in a quite an amazing way. In Africa, the orphans we have, we have some individuals who were much older when their mothers were killed. And they have really uh, retained a lot of what they learned as youngsters in the wild. And they serve as pretty good role models. So the groups that, that are formed in um, the big sanctuaries in Africa, they're not totally the same as wild chimps, but then wild chimps in different parts of Africa are different too. So what we hope to do, what we would like to do, is put them back in the wild. But where do we find the forest where there are no wild chimps who would probably kill them, no people whose villages they'd wander into, and one or the other would get hurt. So it's a very hard situation. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Goodall. Last question from here. We've got a question right here. Can we bring the mic here? Right here, right in front of me. We're all friendly here. We're going to pass the mic to you. <laughs> pass it down. Hi. Um, this question is for Jane Goodall. I'm curious what types of projects the school children in your schools in Africa are choosing, what they deem necessary to preserve the earth, versus what types of projects children in the United States are choosing, and what you might like to see more of here for our school children. All right. Thank you very much. Dr. Okay, Goodall. Well, um, interestingly enough, there's quite a lot of similarity uh, in both countries, uh, well, many countries now, children are planting trees. And uh, the latest project, for, which is a joint project in the U.S. for Roots and Shoots, is called Rebirth the Earth. And they are planting trees as a goal, set goal of, I can't remember how many thousand. But for every tree they plant, they also raise money, which goes out to Tanzania, for a tree nursery in the school, and the school will look after the little seedlings in the nursery, and then they will distribute them to other schools. So that we're seeing the greening of schoolyards, uh, cleaning up of beaches, that happens all over the world. Children uh, everywhere are learning about the animals and plants in their environment. But then, of course, it starts to change because the projects depend on the problems, the local problems, to some extent. There's much more uh, fundraising, obviously, in the U.S. and wealthier schools. Uh, they, they do a lot of bake sales and lemonade stands and car cleanings and all that kind of stuff, which doesn't happen in, in Africa because they don't have the kind of resources for it. But that fundraising then goes to, to help sometimes uh, poor children in Tanzania in return for what they can share of their culture. We don't... We do not encourage any charity. It's got to be sharing. Um, so I, I could go on for a long time, but it's, you know, stray dogs in both places. And China, too. 
you'd be surprised at how many children in China love animals and work to help them. Thank you very much. So, last thought to our audience about the work you've done and what you think should move forward. Dr. Goodall first. Last thought to our audience. Well, my last thought is going to be about the future. Because if we care about preserving chimpanzees and forests, if we're not educating our young people to be better stewards than we've been, then there's not really much point. We may as well all give up. And I think that the, the really tough thing to get across to people is that every single day, every one of us lives, we make an impact on the environment. And we have a choice as to what kind of impact we make. And if every one of us would spend just a little bit of time thinking about the consequences of the choices we make, what we buy, what we eat, where did it come from, how was it made, <coughs> did it um, <coughs> lead to human suffering or animal suffering? Sorry, my voice is going. <coughs> but uh, basically that's so to realize that you make a difference. Each one of us makes a difference every single day. Thank you. Dr. Nishida, your last thought to the yeah. audience. Yeah, um, okay. I, 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 I'm talking about the uh, biggest programs that remain, uh, which I think is uh, trade. Uh, human beings uh, are economical animals. Um, human is characterized by exchange of uh, uh, things uh, and uh, politics and economy develop uh, very much. And how a chim a ch a chimpanzees share food, but uh, the meaning of sh uh, sharing food in chimpanzees has not been well understood still yet. So I think uh, the, the origin of uh, human uh, Economics and policy uh, is the most important program that has remained. Thank you very much, yeah. Dr. Nishida, Dr. Goodall. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.